Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen we have a puzzle that has been requested numerous times in the last few days and by two world-class uh, setters no less. Um, now I have to say uh, the puzzle is by Stimim who has appeared on the channel before um, but I approach this puzzle with some trepidation and that is because it's been published on Logic Masters Germany uh, I'm not uh, feeling trepidation because of its 100% approval rating, but it does have 5 out of 5 stars for difficulty, which basically means it's going to be monstrously hard. Um, now, the other reason I think it's going to be monstrously hard is as I was putting it into our software, I was looking at it, and I have absolutely no clue how to solve this puzzle. Um, you can see, I mean, I'll go through the rules in detail in a moment, but apart from the thermometers and the cages, there is a knight's move constraint, and that's it. And really, I am not at all sure uh, I have any good ideas about how to start this. So anyway, we're going to have a look at it in a minute. Um, a quick shout out. If you any of you do watch the channel and enjoy the content and aren't subscribed, then please consider subscribing and helping us to reach 250,000 subscribers. We are really close and what a milestone that would be for this little old channel to get to that sort of number. It would be amazing. Um, so any anything you can do to help us reach that, we would be most appreciative. Um, also, a big thank you to all of those, uh, all, all of you who support us over on Patreon. Um, Patreon is the site on which we publish a lot of extra content each month. And many, many of you have decided to support us there. And we are so grateful. It really helps us to keep doing what we're doing. Um, and yeah, do check out our solve of Scott Strosal's uh, compass puzzle. If you've not seen that yet, do try the puzzle and then, then check out the solve. It is a beauty. Um, now, anything else I want to mention before we get into the rules? No, I don't think so. Let us, let me read you the rules. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small digit in the top left corner of the cage, which you can see in this puzzle may be restated as uh, basically digits in cages sum to 10. Um, along thermometers, um, digits must increase from the bulb end and cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So if this square was a one, we could not have a one in any of these cells because a chess knight in this cell could jump to these cells. Obviously we couldn't also have a one in any of these cells either. But that's just normal Sudoku. Um, so it's the knight's move that's the interesting additional restraint. Now, with that, as always on Cracking the Cryptic, we recommend you have a puzzle, a go at the puzzle before you uh, watch the video. And you can do that by clicking the link underneath the video, and that will take you to a web page that looks identical to this one. And you can play the puzzle on whichever device takes your fancy. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, and I say let's get cracking. <laughs> But uh, I'm not sure how to get cracking in this particular instance. Um, one obvious thing to note is that we have a number of two cell thermometers. So these thermometers are guiding us as to which is the lower digit of the 10 uh, total. So if we think about how many ways there are of making 10 in two cells, there are four, one, nine, two, eight, three, seven, and four, six. So we know that on each of these bulbs, there's got to be the number one, two, three, and four. And in each of the ends of the thermometers, therefore, you've got to have six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, now, actually, the other thing I've just noticed, which I'm not sure how helpful it is, but I'm quite sure Stimim has designed this into the puzzle is that because the of the way that these thermometers are offset or the 10 cages are offset if we were to try and put one nine into this this 10 cage you can't now put one nine in either of those 10 cages because obviously one nine is ruled out from this one because this one can't contain a one and therefore can't contain a nine but the corollary of that is if this one can't contain a nine it also can't contain a one so that obviously works the same way for this 10 cage. So something that is a little interesting is that these 10 cages are all different. They all contain a different way 
of making 10. And I guess that is also true for those 10 cages. Look, so these 10 cages are also offset. They face a different direction, if you like, to these 10 cages. So again, if we try and put 1, 9 into there and ask whether now we could have 1, 9 in either of these 10 cages, we obviously can't. This one, the 1 is ruled out, so, so is the 9. This one, the 9 is ruled out, so, so is the 1. So the first thing I've noticed or well, the second thing I've noticed is that these are different from these. But in this... Yeah, the problem with this, these cages are we don't, we don't even know the order. Hmm. Maybe the fives are important, look, because if... Yeah, f 5 can never go into a 10 cage, because if it does, you have to repeat it. And two 5s in the same box doesn't work for Sudoku. So 5 has got to be in one of those 5 cells in box 1, in one of these 5 cells in box 4, in one of these 5 cells in box 6. Ah, now, I f ah, right, finally I've spotted something a bit more clever, which is that a bit more clever, more cleverer. Um, this cell can't be a five and neither can this one. And that's because of the knight's move constraint. If I try and put a five in here, you can't put a five in either of those squares or either of these squares. And of course it works the same way with a five here because of the knight's move constraint, those two would be ruled out. So if there is a five in either of these positions, the five in box four has to go in one of those three squares and the five in box six has to go in one of those three squares and we'd have repeated fives in row six of the grid. So we can actually rule five out of all six of those squares and there must be a five in one of these squares in column four. Okay, now maybe we are getting somewhere. Maybe I've got to use the thermometer. We've got... Uh, the thermometer looks a bit like a heartbeat. <laughs> I've just realized that's probably uh, not what you tune into Cracking the Cryptic for. <laughs> to hear that the best logic I've got for this particular thermometer is that it looks like a heartbeat. Um, uh, I have no idea how this thermometer does anything for anybody though. It's not, it's just not much of a restriction. A four cell thermometer means each one of these squares could be one of six different numbers. Um, and we, ha we just don't have the restriction in the grid to even begin to use that. It's quite interesting actually, this, this 10 cage, yeah, that this is interesting actually. I've just noticed something else. So if we think about whatever the, these 10 cages are, we know these 10 cages are different, but also whatever th is in this 10 cage can't appear in this two by two block either. So this 10 cage has a mirror in one of these 10 cages. Well, it can't be this 10 cage because of the knight's move constraint. So let, let me just check this is right. So if, if this is, if this is one nine and this is two eight. Now we now know, I think that one nine and two eight cannot appear in this two by two block. Clearly ones and nines can't, clearly twos and eights can't. We've already done that logic. Now that means the same thing is true of this, if, if I try and put, so this would have to be 3, 7 and 4, 6, which means we can't put 3, 7 and 4, 6 into this 10 cage, which means I've got to either put 1, 9 or 2, 8 into this 10 cage, and I can't put 2, 8 in here, because even if I try and do it this way round, these are a knight's move apart. So, ah, this is interesting, isn't it? 
this is interesting. I'm going to color. I'm going to color these because I think I've got to keep track of the parity of the 10 cages. So I know that these 10 cages are different from these 10 cages. This is also blue. These have to be different from the purples as well. So maybe we can start to construct. Yeah, yeah, look, this is the same. This is the same because if I make this purple, I now have to put whatever I put in this box has to go into these squares. And that won't work because if I put them into these squares, they will rule they will rule whatever's in here out from both of these two 10 cages here. And that will break the puzzle because we know if, we, if we're starting from the premise that this is purple. So this cannot be purple. This is also blue. Now, can I do the same with this one? I can, I can, it's exactly the same logic. If I make this one blue, I have a problem. Because now, where do I put this blue domino in box four? This is fascinating. This is absolutely fascinating. So if I make this blue, this would have to be a blue domino. Because just by Sudoku, this isn't anything clever. You know, if this is a one and a nine, these two squares now have to be one and nine because we know that blue squares are not the same as purple squares, so there couldn't be a one nine in the purple. This would have to be a one nine in some order. We don't know the order, but we do know that whichever way the order works, I could not now put ones and nines up here where I would need to. So in other words, these, this square here, or these two squares are purple. Now, that means, of course, that in box one, these two squares have got to be purple. And and now we get somewhere with the fives, look. Be oh, we get loads of interesting stuff here, actually. Fives are not in the purple because we know that the purple is two digits that add to ten. Five is here, therefore, so five can't be there in box four. Five is in one of these two squares in box four now, which means it's not in those squares in box six. It's not in this square. And ah, there the trail runs cold. There's an aeroplane going past my window, but I have to have my window open at the moment because it is about a zillion degrees in the UK. Um, now, oh, this feels like I'm really close to like having a clever thing to say. Um, come on, Simon, be more cleverer. Uh, oh, I've got another thing to say. Whatever's in this domino here, look. Oh, this is going to get really difficult with colouring. I'm going to need more colours because let's imagine let's imagine that this was a one nine pair again. Now we know now that one of these two ten cages, because these are purple, is a one nine pair. But we also know this is a one nine pair. So it can't be this one. Because if we try and put a one nine pair in this one it will clash because of the knight's move constraint. So if this was a 1-9 pair, actually we would know for sure that this was a 1-9 pair as well. And we would know these, whichever the order was. Oh, in fact, we've got a thermometer here, so we'd actually know it would be this. So these four cells here form a sort of checkerboard. This is, this is very interesting. But of course, I don't know that this is a one nine. This could be two, eight, three, six, or f what? Two, eight, three, seven, or four, six. <sighs> 
Now, look, this cell is also interesting. Because this cell, where does the, whatever I put in this cell, let's put 9 into this cell. Where does that 9 now appear in this box? We know it can't be in a blue cell. And it can't be in these cells by Sudoku. And it can't be in those cells by Knight's Move. So whatever is in this cell has to make a reappearance in this cell. And again, this is why I need more colours, because in a way I'd like to keep track of the fact that these two cells are mirrored. And it's not enough just to say that this is purple, because it's a much stronger consideration than just saying these are both purple. These are both purple, I should say. Because I'm not just saying they're purple, I'm actually saying they are the same, which is a big restriction. In fact, I'm now, I'm now beginning, I think, to understand this puzzle a bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is a gorgeous idea for a puzzle, isn't it? This is a gorgeous idea for a puzzle. I want us to... Let's imagine that this puzzle was presented to us without this thermometer. Let's just stare at it for a moment. And the question... The question I'm asking myself is how, what is it about this puzzle's internal logic without this thermometer that tells us how to disambiguate these 10 cages? How would I know this? Let's imagine the finished solution was presented to us and this was a 1-9 pair. What is it in the puzzle's internal logic that tells me that this is a 1-9 pair? The answer is nothing. At least I don't think it's anything, because there's a whole load of 10 cages and I can prove that, you know, I can prove that, for example, if this, whatever is in this 10 cage, I know for sure is not in this 10 cage. I know for sure it's not in this 10 cage. But how do I know what the actual parity of this 10 cage is? What is, what is it in the logic of this of this Sudoku without this thermometer that tells me that. The, uh, there is nothing here. There are only 10 cages. And the Knight's Move constraint only becomes uh, useful once you know what any of the digits actually are. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. So this thermometer, I believe, is here for one reason only. It is, it is to tell us which of the multiple solutions to this puzzle without this thermometer is the correct one because if this thermometer isn't here one way of thinking about it is that this cell could be any of the digits one two three and four it's got four choices this one would then have three choices this would have two choices this would be left with one choices one choice so I, i'm not certain about this but it feels like there might be 24 solutions to this puzzle without this thermometer but this thermometer what's on this thermometer will tell us so yeah another way of thinking about this is let's imagine let's forget about numbers for a moment and imagine that we labeled these 10 cages a b c d e f g h something like that and then we said that one condition was that a plus c was equal to 10 b plus d was equal to 10 etc then what we could do with cells like this one is we could write in uh, that would, that was G, wasn't it? I can't remember. Maybe it was H. If that was H, we could write in H here. Whatever we put in this cell would have a mirror in one of those two cells. I'm not sure if we'd know which one it was, but it would. And, that, you know, there would be a checkerboard arrangement up here relating to this cell, a checkerboard arrangement down here relating to this cell. And these would all contain letters. And then we would have a complete grid of letters. And this thermometer would then say, ah, now I'm going to tell you that C is lower than F. Let's imagine this said C, F, G, H or something like that. This thermometer would be telling us that C is the lowest digit. Well, it's lower than G, whatever I said, F, G and H, whatever it was. And then, then we would have some clue 
especially if all of these digits yeah yeah this is gonna how it's gonna work let's imagine that on in the finished solution all of these digits either equate to bulbs or they equate to big numbers so let's imagine that let's imagine this was a b c d and on this thermometer we saw a b c d what would we then know about the puzzle well we would know that this would have to be the six this would have to be the seven this would have to be the eight this would have to be the nine and that would allow us to map back to these cells and complete the puzzle and find out which of the 24 solutions was the correct one this is how we're going to do the puzzle so unfortunately i don't have the option of using letters because we haven't built that into the web interface yet but it's coming it's coming don't worry um so what i am going to have to do i haven't have i got enough colors to do it no i don't okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to label i'm going to label one two three four and then nine eight seven six and we are now going to solve this puzzle as if this thermometer did not exist and what we're probably going to find is in fact we'll get clashes if we, if we consider these these i want us to realize though that i am not saying that this um i am not i don't want people to view this as bifurcation because it is absolutely not what I'm about to do is not bifurcation. I am very aware that what I have to do to solve this puzzle is to find a solution and then use this thermometer to find the solution. And the only way of finding a solution, or the only way I'm gonna be able to find a solution is with some way of labeling the cells individually because I need to be able to say that this, this cell has a map to this cell, and it does. Um, now now is there anything else that we need to think about before we go down this line yeah what i was going to say is that it's not yeah it's not correct oh yeah it's a bit it's a bit difficult to explain We have to view these these numbers not as numbers but as labels so in so in solving the the puzzle now i am going to ignore absolutely any logic that comes from this thermometer because these numbers don't have their sort of absolute value i'm using them purely as labels let's imagine that these are not numbers these are labels and the labels i've put into these two cells do add up to 10 that is true to say but they needn't be one and nine. It's absolutely possible that in the finished solution, this domino will contain two, eight, three, seven, or four, six. Similarly for this one. Let's view these as labels and see where the internal logic of the puzzle takes us. And I'm sorry to label, label this, but this is such a cool puzzle. And I don't want people to think that what I'm about to do here is guessing, because I don't think it is, but I think it is fascinating. Now let's see where we get to. Let's get recracking. Because now this I know can't be the four six because that would clash here. So this has to be three and seven. Therefore this is three and seven, which is perfect, which allows me to place the seven and the three. These squares are four, five and six in some order. The blue squares still haven't made an appearance in column three, so we can see that these four squares have to be blue and have to be the digits one, two, eight, and nine. Yeah, and here, here we go again. This, this is, this is gorgeous. This, this is the great, the greatest naked single in the history of Sudoku. This square. What's that square? Well. These squares are blue, four blue squares. The four blue squares, because of the knight's move constraint, all see that square. These are four purple squares, already in the box. So this square can't be blue and it can't be purple. Therefore, it has to be a five. 
<laughs> How brilliant is that? Now, this square, therefore, is blue. One of those two squares has got to be a five. And in fact, these two squares are mirrors. Look at that. So whatever is in... Ah, this is good. This Because this can't be two or eight. And again, this is helpful with the labeling. Because whatever is in this cell obviously makes no appearance in those cells in box four. So its only possible position is here. So this square has to be one, two, eight, and nine. And from the column, it can't be two or eight. So this is a one, nine, and this is a one, nine. These squares have got to be 2, 6, and 8 to complete that column. That one can't be a 6. Ah, of course. Right, so now we've got a 10 cage here. We know 10 is either 1, 9, or 2, 8. And it can't be 1, 9 because of this 1, 9. So this is a 2, 8 pair, which means this one is a 1, 9 pair. This one is a 1, 9 pair because of the knight's move restriction. And this is a 2, 8 pair. And this square can't be 2 or 8 because this is a 2, 8 pair, which means this is a 2, 8 pair. And this 2, 8 pair is disambiguatable. If that, is that a word? I feel like I'm the scientist in The Simpsons. I'm using the debigulator or whatever it is. The 8 here sees that square. This square's got to be a 2. That's an 8. This 8 sees that one. This must be a 2. That must be an 8. This 8 sees that one. And now we cook with gas. Um, at least for a little while. Oh... Ah, uh -huh, no, we can keep keep cooking with gas. 8 here and 8 here. Where does 8 go in box 2? Well, it's ruled out of those squares by Sudoku, and the knight's move rules it out of those squares as well. So it must be in one of these two positions, which means it... Ah, uh, now, it must... Oh, this is, this is beautiful again. Look at this. The 8 has to go in one of those three squares. Well, that one is a knight's move away, so it's not going there. This one, if we make this an 8... This square would be a 2, and that would clash. So that's not an 8. And that means that must be an 8. So this square can't be an 8. Oh, now... This square sees that one. So where can 8 go in box 9 of the grid? Well, it can't go there or there. And it can't go here. Oh, it's this 2. This 2, look. I can't put the 8 in this square. If I put the 8 there, that square, because this is a domino, would have to add up to 10. And that 2 would clash with that 2 because of the knight's move constraint. So again, 8 can't go here because of that one here because of that one. 8 lives in one of those two cells. So this square's a naked single now. That's a 2. 2, 6 and 8 all get placed in this column. 2. 2 gets placed in this box, I think, because of the 2 ruling out those squares. So that's got to be a 2. 2, two must be in one of these two positions in row eight because it can't go here well actually it can't go here because of the knight's move or normal sudoku rules uh sorry i'm stuck let me just have a <laughs> have another look um You can see, hopefully you can see anyway, how hard it would be to pick up some of these interactions without without us using labeling. It would be very, very difficult. Um, ah, here we go. Column two. What, what digits have I got left to place? I've got one, four, five, and nine. Well, this square, we can use our old knight's move trick here. 
these three squares here are 1, 5 and 9. So if I was to put 1, 5 or 9 in this square, it would remove the possibility entirely from having that digit in that, that threesome because this cell sees both of those squares by knight's move and this by Sudoku. So this square is a naked single. That can only be a 4. So these squares are 1, 5 and 9. I feel like this whole 1, 9 sort of area here must be resolvable. The 4... Ah, the 4 tells us the parity of this 10 cage. Because this can't be 3, 7. We've already got a 3, 7 here. It can't be 4, 6. It can't be 2, 8. This is 1, 9 as well. Six, is that restricted? Six has got to be in one of three positions. Six has got to be in one of three positions in this box. Uh, so six is a purple. Well, these these two have both got to be purple as well because the five is definitely in this domino. So in fact, what have we got left to place here? We've got three, four, five, and seven in those squares. So let's just label that up and see what we can see. So five can't go there or there because of this five pair and this five. Three, seven can't go here. Four can't go in either of those. Seven can't go in this one by knight's move. I can't see if there's a knight's move restriction applying to this cell. Um, I'm sure there is. I miss them all the time. Uh, ah, no, this square. This square is a problem, or at least it might be it might be helpful because this square sees all four of this three, four, five, seven quadruple because of the knight's move constraint. So whatever goes in this square can't be three, four, five, seven. It can't be one, two, eight, nine. So does that just leave six? I'm just going to check that. If this is, this can't be one, it can't be two, it can't be three, four, or five. It can be 6. It can't be 7 because it would rule 7 out there. It can't be 8 for two reasons. It can't be 9. This is a 6. So that means there's a 6 in one of those two squares. Look. Six is not in these two squares. Six is in one of these three squares. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. So we've got we've got six, six, six repeating itself. Sign of the devil in these two little triples here. But we can use the knight's move restriction to, to break uh, the devil's hold over us because we can't have a six in this position or this position. Because if we try that, it would rule the six out of all three of those positions. So actually, this and this are not six. And that might be useful now because we've still got to place a six in column eight of the grid. And we know it's in none of those positions. So it's got to be in one of these three positions. And it can't be in this one because that would rule the six out of both of those squares. Oh, so we, we get the six in row two then. These sixes now interact. We've not put a six in row two. It can't go there. It can't go here. The only place it can go is there. That is gorgeous. Okay. So. Now, can we... Sevens in one of those two positions. Ah, now look at this. this is just, it's beautiful again. It's beautiful again from Stimim. Where does seven go in this box? It can't go here because the knight's move would then prevent a seven going in box five. 
and it can't go here because of this 3-7 domino, so a 7 here would rule 7 out of both of those squares. So 7 goes in one of those two positions in box 8. Well, that's interesting because this cell sees both of those cells. If this was a 7, that can't be a 7 and that can't be a 7, and there would be nowhere to put a 7 in box 8. So this is a 3 and this is a 7. The three rules of three out of that cell, look. Oh, but more importantly, where does a three go in box eight now? If this is a three, you can't put a three anywhere apart from there. So this is a three. That fixes that this is a seven, I think. Hang on, let me just, three must go down there. Three can't go here now, so this is seven, this is four, this is five, this is three. This seven fixes the seven down here. The five fixes the five is in this square. We know one of these two is a five, it must be this one if that's a five. This square we should be able to write in. It's got to be a four because just to complete the row. These two squares are four and five to complete this box. Now, let us stare and see if we can, yeah, we can, we know what these three squares are, don't we? They are three, six, and seven. So let's pencil those in. This one can't be six. This three sees that one, so that's a seven. This becomes a 3-6 pair. This, this row actually, look. Oh, is this a 2-6 pair? Is that right? 6 can't go here for because it would rule the 6 out from there. 2, yeah, this is a 2-6 pair. So this square has to be a 4 or an 8 because it's part of a domino. Which, yeah, 8, eight works, doesn't it? Oh, but look, 7s, this 7 and this 7 and this 7. I mean, this is a... Oh, good grief. This is a... We've got to put 7 into one of these two squares. Well, it can't go in the domino because that would need a 3 here, which it can't have. So this is not 7. This is 7, which means 7 is in one of those two cells up there. This is a 7-8 pair, so this must be an 8 now. This must be a 2. This is a 6. This is a 6. This is a 3. Eight. 8 is now locked into... can't go here. 8 is locked into one of those squares because of the knight's move restriction. And, okay. I feel like we've just made huge progress. I hope I can convert it into something useful. Where does 5 go, look, in this box? It can't go here because of the knight's move, so 5 is in one of those two cells. I would... I really don't want it to be on the thermometer. That would break all of the... I mean, I'm not going to assume it's not on the thermometer, but obviously I need this thermometer to disambiguate um, the labelling in the puzzle. Now, to do that, it's going to have to either, I think, contain 1s, 2s, 3s and 4s, or 6s, 7s, 8s and 9s. Um, in fact, let's look at what the options are for those squares. One of these squares has to be a 4... Uh, okay, four here can't go there. So is this just a five then? That would be very good. If this is, yeah, I'm quite relieved about that. That is the five because this is a four six pair because this four six pair rule a four six out from that square. So five is not on the thermometer yet, which is perfect. I don't want a five on that thermometer. This. 
So what do we need to complete this column then? We need 1, 2, 7 and 9. So that, that square is interesting. Look, that can't be a 2 or a 9. That has to be a 1 or a 7. 2 is placeable, actually. These 2s and this 2, we can't place a 2 in either of those squares because of the knight's move restriction. That just is a 2. So that means 2 is here. It's on the thermometer. Now, I am very... Well, I, I believe that means this will have to be a 4, not a 6. But let, let's carry on. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to assume that. These squares have got to be 1, 8, 9 to complete this column. This is 8. This can't be 1. This square's got to be 1. So that square's got to be 7 or 9, look. This column as well, look, we've got to place three, four, five, and seven. This square is a naked single <laughs> because of the three, seven in the row, and this being a four, preventing that from being a four. This has to be a five. Now that might, well, that is useful, look. That gives me a four here and a five here. This four gives me a six here and a four here. This six gives me a six here. And a 4 here, where it takes the position of the 7. The 7 gets me over here. 9, 1, 9, 7. Don't make a mistake, Simon. This might be possible to solve. This 1. Oh, this 1 sees all sorts of things. It forces this. Neither of those squares can be a 1. This has to be a 1 in the box. That fixes the 1 and the 9. Oh, I thought the 9 was going to drop back in here, but it doesn't. Um... It's the 4 and the 2, so I very much suspect this is a 1-3 pair. Uh, but let's carry on. 1-9, um, deadly pattern there. That should be disambiguated, I would have thought, by a, a knight's move at some point. These squares have got to be 1, 3 and 8. So this, maybe this square. That can't be a 3. Can an 8 see that anywhere? This is a 1 or a 3 because of the 8 here. This square is a 3 or an 8. Oh, this square, look, has got to be a 1, 8. Or, in fact, it's got to be 1 or a 9 to complete this row. So this, this is a 3. The 3 gets us back over here. And this, I think, is going to be proof of concept. Um, 1. The 1 sees this one. So this is a 9. This is a 1. The 1 sees this one. 1, 9, 9, 1. This should be a 3. Doesn't help over there. The 9 sees that square. That's got to be a 1. These squares have got to be 4, 5 and 9. This is a 5 because of the 4, 9 in the row. This is a 4, 9 pair. Now something should point at one of these. This 9 sees that one. So this is a 4. This is a 9. 9, 5, 5, 4. And this is... Right, let me just see if this is correct. Yes, this is a correct solution to the puzzle, but not the correct solution. Because you can see, look at this thermometer. It's absolutely broken, which is marvellous. One, four, two, three. So we've got, we now know that our labelling was incorrect. Uh, our, our lab, no, I'm going to re restate that. The labelling was absolutely precise, and we now... If we imagine that these are A, D, B, and C, for example, we can we can now say A needs to be associated with a one nine pair. I can't remember. Did I say did I say D? Did I say A, B, C, D? Oh, I don't know what I said. But basically, this one we need to make sure that this one is associated with twos and eights. This one has got to be associated with threes and sevens because we need this thermometer correctly to be to go one, two, three, four, not one, four, two, three. So the one nine is perfect. We, we can leave ones and nines alone. This is not perfect. So every four in the grid needs to be replaced with a two. And every six in the grid needs to be replaced with an eight. So let us 
perform this magic now and see where that takes us. So let's label all the fours up. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the coloring because I'm going to need to color the grid here. Otherwise, everything will get very... Oh, I got rid of those. Can we get those back? Yes. Right. So now let's... Now, let's look, we were looking at fours. Let's find all the fours in the grid. Here we go. Now, all these fours, I'm going to color them in and turn them into twos because I want them to be twos. And now I also know that the digit associated with four is obviously six. So I need all of the sixes in the grid to now be replaced by twos counterpart, which is eight. So let's find all the sixes. Uh, there, let's go to find all of them. There they all are. Let's label those blue and turn them all into eights. And the reason I need to label them, obviously, is because now I've got a load. I've got um, 18 eights in the grid and I need to know which ones are the correct ones, which are the colored ones and which ones still need to be changed. Now, the two needs to become a three. So let's find all the two all the white twos in the grid, all the white twos in the grid need to become threes. Let's do that. Two, white two, let's color them, turn them into threes. Um, so, and the white twos, so we now need to find the white eights and turn them into sevens. Let's do that, white eights, white eights. I think that's nine of them. Yep, they all, I better color them in. Uh, they all become sevens. And finally, you can see I need to replace the white threes with fours. So let's find all the threes. I'm probably not gonna need coloring to do this because once we've done this, everything should look hunky-dory. So they all become fours. And all of the sevens, the white sevens have got to become sixes and i'm sure you can all see what's going to happen here i hope have i got two three four five six seven eight nine if i change these to sixes now let's have a look at this grid because i think that this will be we've now taken the labeling solution that we had and i'm gonna uh, get rid of the color oh i've got rid of all the bulbs again <laughs> Where are the bulbs? There, 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 and there. Let's delete those cells. Right, and have a look and a stare at this grid. I'm going to click check, and the computer says this is a correct solution, i.e. every row, every column, and every box contains the digits 1 to 9. And you can see, if you look at my 10 cages, they all add up to 10. But now, my thermometer is perfect, so I have disambiguated all of the possible solutions into the correct solution Stimin wanted to wanted us to find. And that is one of the most beautiful, beautiful puzzles you could possibly imagine. What, what a construction that is. It was just gorgeous. The fact it forced you to realize that there were multiple solutions without this thermometer and then you have to basically treat it as a labeling problem, which allows you to use the logic in the logic of the puzzle without the thermometer to find a solution and then relabel to find the solution is is just gorgeous to me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you solved it too. And I look forward to the comments. I do read the comments, as you know. Um, so yeah, do let me know what you thought of the puzzle. It's absolutely brilliant. And um, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.